The cool thing about waves is that they can move energy without moving mass. Because waves are massless, multiple waves can be in the exact same place at the exact same time. This is called the superposition principle. When two waves are in the same place at the same time, their energy combines. Overlapping sound waves combine their volumes. Overlapping light waves combine their brightnesses. The energy of a wave is represented by its amplitude. In this video, we will look at several examples of amplitude addition. Amplitude addition is called interference. When you look at a wave, the amplitude is the distance between the equilibrium position and either extreme height. The high extreme is called the crest, and the low extreme is called the trough. When crests from different waves combine, you get more energy. The same happens with troughs. Combining two troughs from different waves gives you more energy. But when a crest from one wave and a trough from another wave combine, you get less energy. We are out in the driveway with a long slinky, some tape, and a bowling pin. The slinky is at rest in its equilibrium position. I can do work and send a pulse of energy through the slinky. It is not enough energy to hit the pin. Alternatively, Ben can send a pulse of energy toward me. By itself, this is not enough energy to hit the pin either. If we both do this at the same time, the energy combines when it intersects and we're able to knock the pin down. Alternatively, I can send my pulse with a positive amplitude while Ben sends his with a negative amplitude. If we both do this at the same time, my crest meets his trough and the two pulses will cancel each other out. This piece of string is covered in black and red tick marks. Let's say that the red marks are crests and the black marks are troughs. I'm going to slip the rope in between the slats of this chair. Let's say that the two sides of the rope represent identical waves from two sources, either sounds coming out of two speakers or light coming out of two bulbs. Waves from either source can spread out in all directions and fill the room. I can use the ropes to show what happens when the waves overlap with each other. If I look for data right in between the two sources, I see that the crests from each source line up together, as do the troughs. Anywhere in this region, the amplitude would go up, producing a louder sound or a brighter light. However, if I shift over a little bit, I see that the crests from one source meet up with the troughs from the other source. In this region, the amplitude would go down, resulting in lower volume or dimmer light. If I sweep across the room, I can see I get alternating regions of high energy and low energy. Instead of the one-dimensional ropes, we can use these two-dimensional waves. This acetate sheet has a bunch of concentric circles printed on it. Let's say that the black lines are crests and the clear spaces are troughs. The source of the waves is in the middle of the inner circle. I have two of these sheets. If I put them right on top of each other, I would get perfect alignment and would have higher energy, light, or sound everywhere. If I have a set of speakers on my desk, they are not at the same exact spot. In fact, I can move them relative to each other. How does that affect the sound quality? We can see that with the acetate sheets. If I pull them apart slightly, we can see these bands form. These are regions where the crests line up with crests. These would be high energy places. There are also places where crests line up with troughs. These would be low energy places. You can see that there's a harsh contrast between the high and low energy areas when the sources are close together. But if I get them far apart, the overlap is much more even and would produce a more consistent experience. This idea is very important when placing surround sound speakers in your house. It's also important in theaters. If you sit near the front in a theater, the loud and the quiet regions are actually quite close together. If you rock your head from side to side and pay attention, you can detect these loud and quiet spots. I made a quick little demonstration with Desmos to show you some important examples of interference. I created a bunch of different mathematical waves that I can turn on or off on the graph paper. Here's the first one. It's just a simple wave. This second one has a slightly lower frequency. The third one has an even lower frequency. And this fourth one has a much higher frequency. I can also adjust the energy of each wave by changing the amplitude if I want to. The first thing I want to do is turn on two different copies of the exact same wave. Because these waves are doing the same thing at the same time, we say that these waves are in phase with each other, or that they are coherent. If I add these two waves, which each have a height of 1, I get a new wave that is exactly the same except it has a height of 2. This is called constructive interference, because the two coherent waves build each other up. If one of the waves had a height of 1 and the other had a height of 2, the sum of the new wave would have a height of 3. Remember that the height is related to the energy of the wave. If these were light waves, the new wave would be the same color but brighter. If these were sound waves, the new wave would be the same pitch but louder. 
I have a free app on my iPad that mimics the behavior of the signal generator we use during our magnetism unit. This app lets me play any pitch I want to, either in the left speaker, the right speaker, or both speakers on my iPad. To show you an example of constructive interference, I will play the same note through both speakers. I picked middle C, which is 261 cycles per second. If I play one speaker at a time, they are clearly audible, but when I play them both at the same time, it is clearly much louder. I can do this with light, too. If I shine two red lasers on the same spot on the wall, the spot looks brighter. The two dim reds combine to a brighter red. It's the same frequency with higher amplitude. Let's reset the Desmos board and pull our basic wave back in. This time we're going to add them together with a second wave that is perfectly out of phase with him. These two waves are identical and would sound the same if they were sound waves and look the same if they were light waves. The difference is that when one is pushing up, the other is pushing down. If we add these two waves together, they add up to nothing. If these two waves are sounds and we play them together, we hear nothing. If they are colors and we combine them, we see nothing. This may sound super weird to you, but it really happens. When two waves combine and their overall amplitudes decrease, we call it destructive interference. Let's look at an example of this with sound. If I use a signal generator to drive a speaker, the AC current of the signal generator pushes the speaker outward when the current's going one way and sucks the cone back in when the current's going the other way. If I take the input wires from the generator to the speaker and turn them around, it means that the speaker will now do the opposite motions of what it was doing before. Instead of pushing out, it will suck in. Instead of sucking in, it will push out. The pitch sounds the same either way. The air is still shaking the same way. But if I had two speakers and I plug one in this way and plug the other one in that way and play them both at the same time, they will cancel each other out. One speaker is trying to push the air outward while the other one is trying to suck the air inward. The result is that the air does not vibrate and we don't get a sound at all. This is how noise canceling headphones work. Noise canceling headphones play your music through the speakers, but they also have a microphone that records the random noise in your environment and plays it into your speakers too, but with the AC cycle 180 degrees out of phase with the natural noise. The combination of the music, the noise, and the upside down noise adds up to be just your music. Here's a similar example using light. If I shine this laser onto the wall, I get one spot of light. This is not a surprise. However, if I shine the light through two holes, I do not get two spots of light. I get a whole bunch of them. This is just like the game we played with the rope. The light is hitting everywhere on the wall, but in a bunch of places we're getting constructive interference and we get bright spots. In the other places we're getting destructive interference and we get dark spots. It should be obvious, but it is pretty rare to get perfect examples of constructive or destructive interference in everyday life. It is much more common to have random waves overlap. In these cases, the summation of the energy is called noise. Noise is the most common form of interference. Here I have our basic wave again. I can also add back in a bunch of other waves. Each one has a different frequency. By themselves, each one is a nice, simple, pretty wave. If I add them all together, the new wave I get is not simple or pretty. It is noise. Most of, it th most of us think of Most of us think of environments like this as noisy. That's correct. All the people talking and chairs moving and dishes clanking are all very different frequencies adding together to form noise. With light, we know that individual frequencies represent colors. When we put all the colors together, we get white. White is not a color, it is color noise.
The fourth type of interference that I want to show you has to do with adding waves that are just barely different in frequency. Here I have a high frequency wave. I will bring in another similar but different high frequency wave. You can see that there are moments when the two waves are mostly in phase and would add constructively, but then there are other moments when they are mostly out of phase and would add destructively. Can you imagine what the sum of these two waves would look like? Desmos can add them up for us easily. That looks funny. There are alternating moments of high and low amplitude. If this were a sound, we would hear a loud sound and then a quiet moment, and then a loud sound and then a quiet moment. The sound would wobble. Let's go back to my frequency generator app. In the left speaker, I will play 261 cycles per second, which is a middle C. Our ears are not that picky when it comes to differentiating individual pitches as notes. If I play 262 cycles per second, it still sounds like a C. Here's what it sounds like if I play 261 through one speaker and 262 through the other speaker at the same time. Do you hear the wobble? The difference between the two pitches is one cycle per second. That means once per second they come in and out of phase with each other. You can hear the volume change once per second. What if I play 261 and 263? Now we get two wobbles per second. Now I'll do 261 and 265. That's four wobbles per second. This is why orchestras tune up together. You need to make sure that everyone in the band is playing the same frequency so that the audience does not hear these wobbles. In summary, the superposition principle allows waves to be in the same place at the same time. When this occurs, you get interference. There are four types of interference. Constructive, destructive, noise, and beats. Thank you.